Hey folks, today is Friday, December 8th, 2023. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on this week. Uh, I'm not in the usual place. I'm in California for the Game Awards, and that is the first thing we're gonna jump into today. Uh, not a breakdown, a play-by-play -play of everything. We don't have time for that in this video, but we got a lot of new looks at games that have already been announced, like a new trailer for Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League, uh, a big new look at Hellblade Senua's Saga, but what we wanted to do today is break down 15 entirely new game announcements. I am losing my voice a little bit. Uh, I actually met some of you guys who watched the show out here, so shout out to you guys. But let's just jump in. Uh, the first big announcement was World of Goo. Didn't expect to see another one of these, but it is World of Goo 2, and it looks pretty sweet. Also, Exoborn, this is like a new multiplayer style co-op shooter thing uh, with exoskeleton suits. It felt a little generic, and uh, honestly, it was just a cinematic trailer. We did get a lot of those this year. I really would have liked to have seen gameplay from this so I could say something about it, but that's it. Uh, also, The Last Sentinel, this is from Lightspeed LA, a new studio uh, from someone who used to work at Rockstar Games, uh, and this is kind of billed as a big AAA sci-fi action open world game, so there's a lot of potential there, but again, and just a cinematic trailer. It was a cool trailer, sure, but pretty early to judge that in my opinion, but we also got the announcement of a, a new version of Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. This was like a 2013 game. Uh, it was an indie game technically, and it was a big hit. It was really cool, really creative. It's from the people who would go on to make It Takes Two and A Way Out, so I guess they're giving it like a new lease on life now. That's coming early next year, but we also got the announcement of a new Jurassic Park game with what started as a pretty cool trailer ultimately seems like a game that's I don't, I don't know. I'm a Jurassic Park snob and it, you know, it's hard to get a good Jurassic Park game, especially with something like this, but the trailer and everything we talk about will be linked in the description down below, so you can judge for yourself. Also, Big Walk. This is from the people behind uh, Untitled Goose Game, so they're going in a completely different direction and doing a new, weird, quirky, creative thing that you play with your friends, and it's not gonna be out for a while, and it, you know, we don't really totally know what we're doing in it, but it does seem really creative and really different. We also got a new game from some ex or developers and stuff. It's called Exodus. This is like with starring Matthew McConaughey or something. He was at the Game Awards. It was it was kind of funny. Uh, but this actually has a longer trailer online that gives you a better sense of what the story is for the game. It's very interesting. Sci-fi choices, uh, time dilation and stuff like that. But again, need to see more gameplay. Something I'm really excited about is a new game from the people behind Ori and the Blind Forest. This is called No Rest for the Wicked. And it's kind of like a fantasy game uh, with some like kind of top-down combat, but the art style, the story presentation, everything here looks so up my alley. Just like a good old-fashioned action RPG, but with like the Ori Studios touch on it, a little more emotion and cool art direction. Uh, this is coming to early access in 2024. Next up, we have Don't Nod announcing a new game. It's called Lost Records Bloom and Rage. This is very much, like not to be reductive, but it's very much them doing more of their Life is Strange thing. Uh, the trailer ends with like a bit of a time jump that could be very interesting. But for right now, that's all we really got. But uh, we did get an announcement of Final Fantasy 16 DLC. Two things coming, one of them which is out now, uh, so there's that. It's apparently continuing Clive's story and just doing new stuff in the world. So curious to check that out at some point amidst the million other games. And, and speaking of Shadow Drops, uh, the finals is now out and playable on consoles and PC if you're looking to jump into that. Oh man, but the next one is called Light No Fire. And if that name sounds kind of similar to something else, it's actually from Hello Games, the people behind No Man's Sky. Uh, no Man's Sky had a notorious launch, but ultimately went on to become an incredible game updated over years and years. And believe it or not, at the Game Awards, they brought Sean Murray out <laughs> to once again hype up an ambitious game. Uh, this is essentially, according to him, going to be an entirely open world game. Like it's an actual full created world that you're going to explore with your friends. And it's like massively multiplayer, I, I guess. And it's got a cool fantasy spin on it, but it's probably gonna be a while before we actually see anything from this. At least they showed us some gameplay, but it's early. So, you know, we don't, we don't really know for sure what the deal is, but it seems ambitious and creative and cool. So again, if they could actually pull it off, sounds like a great idea. And again, with how great No Man's Sky has become over the years, I am definitely keeping my eye on this. Also, Sega just like dropped a bunch of new games in development from old franchises. Uh, a new crazy taxi game. I shit my pants. 
a new Jet Set or Jet Grind game, I shit my pants. A new Streets of Rage game, I shit my pants. A new Shinobi game, shit my pants. Golden Axe, kind of. They're, it's such an aggressive move for them to just highlight all these new projects coming. Uh, we don't really have too much information about them, just flashes of them. Some of them could be many years away, but it was kind of Sega coming out with a big flex. Speaking of flexes though, uh, Arcane, uh, the Arcane Leon division, the people who worked on Deathloop, are making a Blade game, an official Marvel's Blade game. Uh, this trailer was so cool. It didn't show us any gameplay or anything, and it's probably going to be a while, but the style, it still kind of feels like it's got an arcane look to it, but it's very much Blade. It's Blade in France, fighting vampires. I am about this. Apparently it's going to be third person, which has me really interested. I like the moves that Marvel is making in the video game world now. So yeah, like I said, it's probably gonna be a while, but that is, on top of my list, dude. Also, now it's dropping. There's God of War Ragnarok DLC. Uh, it seems like it's going to be Kratos kind of going into more arena type stuff, more combat stuff, but it's called God of War Valhalla. And that is free and that's pretty sweet if you're looking for something to play and just jump into. Also, Hideo Kojima came out and announced a new project. You know, the rumors and the stuff for years, and I think it was officially announced, was that he was working with Xbox Game Studios to make some new creative thing using cloud technology and stuff. And we got a reveal of it. It's called OD and it's going to be this like horror game cinematic experience. I don't know too much about it. A lot of big words were thrown out. It's amazing. It's a new thing. It's genre defining. Okay, sure. Uh, but the teaser trailer was very unsettling and very scary. At least sitting in the audience in the auditorium, it hit for me. But we don't know too much about it other than that it is a collaboration between him and movie director uh, Jordan Peele which is a really good collaboration. They've kind of had like a bromance behind the scenes for a while now, so that's cool. But I'm curious to see who else he's working with this. With this. He did tease that this is like kind of like an Avengers team up of people. I, where's Guillermo del Toro in all of this? They've wanted to work together for so long. Still, it's probably going to be a while before we actually see anything of this. You know, the news of the Xbox Kojima partnership was only announced like last year or so. So I don't expect to see anything more from OD anytime soon, but I hope it's cool and I hope it's different. Different is good. Also, last but not least, like the big final thing of the show uh, was Monster Hunter Wilds. This looks like a massive kind of open Monster Hunter game, I guess in the style of Monster Hunter World, but uh, with mounts and just a lot more going on in the environment other than just like a goofy person running around killing dinosaurs, which is still the, the best part of the series. But this showed that they're trying to do something a little different. And I'm curious to see more. We're apparently going to hear more in early 2024, but we know that the game isn't actually releasing until 2025. Still a lot of new game announcements. And like I said, some other cool stuff that we didn't have time to totally dive into. The event itself, I think it was all right, but some of these announcements I am excited about. Of course, the biggest thing is you guys definitely want to hear in the comments what games caught your interest, what announcements caught your interest. It helps for us to see in the comments just so we know what to talk about in videos. So hit us up in the comments. Now jumping over here to talk about the sponsor for today's video real quick. Uh, recently I was going through my stuff and realized I was being charged a monthly fee for something I totally forgot about. I was subscribed to this like small email newsletter. It was only a couple of bucks, but still that adds up over time and I totally forgot. Thankfully today's sponsor Rocket Money is here to help with stuff like that. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. It does a lot. This personal finance app allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, build a custom budget, grow your savings, all in one convenient place. You're actually able to set it up and see all of your current subscriptions all in one convenient place. It helps you really get on top of your personal finances, but most importantly, Rocket Money actually can help you cancel something. Yeah, if you have an unwanted subscription or something like that, it's a matter of like hitting a button and then you don't have to talk to anybody on the phone. I love that. If you're trying to keep on your finances, especially this time of year, uh, you can create a custom budget and you can set notifications uh, so you don't go over your spending limits. It'll keep you in check. It's nice. And also while you're in there, Rocket Money can help you monitor your credit. So to save more and spend less, join the 5 million people using Rocket Money today. Just go to rocketmoney.com slash game ranks or click the link in the description down below to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. So once again, get started for free by going to rocketmoney.com slash game ranks. And big thanks to Rocket Money for sponsoring our videos. Next up, of course, this week, it's a busy week. Uh, the Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer. 
<laughs> where do we even start? At this point, I do feel like, you know, this is Friday. It's kind of been talked to death at this point. We have put out videos about it, uh, but the trailer has absolutely smashed records, uh, like one of the highest viewed YouTube videos. It surpassed the views in like two days of the original Grand Theft Auto V trailer, all the views that that had over a decade. Uh, the excitement for this one is pretty wild, like to the point where I was in an Uber the other day and the driver just out of nowhere just said, hey, the other day my kids went crazy and I was like, was it because the Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer? It's, everybody's talking about it, it is a big thing, and it's interesting how it went down. Of course, it leaked a little early on social media. Somebody leaked a low-res version of it and they plastered buy Bitcoin on the screen. <laughs> but ridiculous. Uh, and then Rockstar just said, all right, screw it, we're putting it out now. So everyone was able to see it, react, and uh, it, it's a lot of what we kind of expected. It's a lot of what the rumors had kind of alluded to, a, a seemingly like a two protagonist type of thing, a Bonnie and Clyde crime romance type of thing, and that has me excited. I really still like Rockstar storytelling more than anything. I love Red Dead Redemption 2 so much, so I'm hoping that there's like a cool crime romance tale here that still has the zaniness that Grand Theft Auto has. Uh, still, uh, it's gonna be a while. It's 2025. The end of the trailer says 2025. Uh, that's still a while away. They've been working on this thing forever. Take your time. Don't rush it. But damn. Again, I don't want to repeat myself or just say what everybody else has been saying. It's cool. We're excited. We're probably going to be talking about it a lot more as the months and years roll on. So yeah. The other bit of news this week is from The Witcher 4. It's, it's not the biggest thing, but if you're looking for any glimmer of info, I would take this at least. We've been covering the little tiny updates that CD Projekt Red has been giving for this new Witcher project, of course, codenamed Polaris, uh, but really kind of gonna be The Witcher 4. Uh, last week, we did cover that a lot of CD Projekt Red is now working on this thing. It is in full swing, but game director Sebastian Kalemba uh, did a interview with Lega Nerd, and they said, while being pretty vague, uh, our priority is to try to do something that always goes beyond the limits. We wanna go further. We wanna try to do something new compared to what we already see in RP. The idea is indeed to build something that goes beyond the previous The Witcher, and that manages to tell something more intense with also more intense gameplay. Uh, they also go on to say the player must also be able to have freedom, feel like they are free. Starting from the construction of the character, our pressure point is immersion. So again, it's a lot of like high concept talk, uh, but the two takeaways from this is they're trying to emphasize more freedom and more intensity, both in the storytelling and the combat. And I think the Witcher combat could definitely use more intensity. I like the Witcher combat. A lot of people dunk on it. I liked it, but there's still definitely room for it to get better. So I would like to see that. The freedom bit is exciting, but also uh, when the game director said specifically that uh, they're, they're trying to do something that hasn't really been done in RPGs before, trying something new, uh, specifically in RPGs, like what could that be? Good luck. I don't know. I can't think of anything new that an RPG would need, but also I don't make the games. so. Uh, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments about this story specifically. What do you want from The Witcher 4? They could really do anything at this point with it. And again, we don't know anything. So I want to know how you guys are feeling. And along with that, speaking of CD Projekt Red, uh, there's another cyberpunk update. Uh, it's pretty wild that they're, they keep doing this. But now it seems like they're officially really pretty much done with this Cyberpunk Ultimate Edition. This is uh, the 2.1 patch. There's tweaks to the radio. There's more car races. There's apparently more like car chase stuff. Uh, they tweaked some boss battles and encounters. You can spend more time with love interests. And there's a metro system. So like that original cool trailer they showed, like you can hop on the metro and get around. Pretty cool. As always, like I don't think anyone will totally forgive CD Projekt Red for how it initially launched, but I'm glad they put their money where their mouth is, and ultimately the net positive now is a good game that's out there. Also, a very small Elden Ring DLC update. I actually almost forgot there was DLC coming, but yes, Shadow of the Erd Tree is still a thing being worked on, and the notoriously quiet guys at FromSoft uh, did actually go on record saying that they're still working on it. Elden Ring producer Yasuhiro Kitaro said that they're working diligently on it. Uh, they, they aim to, and I quote, create an environment where they could concentrate more. The development environment itself is still in its infancy, but it is improving. Specifically to how like they have changed their process on working on games after Elden Ring. He also went on to say, I'll talk about the DLC another time. It's still a little ways off, but progress is going well. Like Bloodborne's expansion, it has new battles and new characters. So please look forward to new things. So there you have it. They're still working on it. I think like the, the metric like bomb, the, the nuke that was the launch of Elden 
Elden Ring uh, is lasting for so long that they can take their time on this. If we don't see it until the end of next year, I think that'll be fine. It'll get a lot of people back into Elden Ring. He knows what he's doing though by comparing it to Bloodborne though. I know he means like structurally and with adding certain new things, but uh, some people are gonna freak out when they see that headline. And of course, if you wanna read that whole interview and everything uh, I talk about today, all of it will be linked in the description down below. And some other things to check out this week, some links and stuff uh, is a new trailer for The Last of Us Part Two uh, re-release, remaster, whatever you wanna call it, uh, with the new like roguelike survival, no return mode. You're getting randomized encounters, randomized situations, uh, different mods that you can unlock that can change uh, the experiences. And it's really just to kind of take advantage of all the combat and all the stuff going on in Last of Us Part Two's gameplay. And I think it's a good idea. People are still waiting for factions. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather have that than this, but this this will keep me busy because I like the gameplay. I actually really like going on YouTube and watching people like perfect the combat and just blaze through a situation, just crushing everyone. And so it's cool to see it here. And also they showed off, like I said, a bunch of locations, but also the characters you can play as like Dina, Lev, uh, but also like you can play as Tommy and that's gonna be pretty cool. Again, that's coming in January. Previews for it so far seem pretty interesting, but we'll talk about that more once it actually drops. Also on the PlayStation side of things, uh, some eagle eyed people may have known uh, that on Steam, uh, Horizon Forbidden West is is now up. It doesn't have a release date yet. We knew it was coming to PC at some point, but it, it's kind of alluding to coming early 2024. That kind of makes sense for these releases to kind of slot it in in January or February where it's a little quiet, but PC fans who've been waiting for that uh, finally probably have something on the horizon. Sorry, terrible, terrible. Andrew, cut it. Also in a really sick trailer, cause I just love the Mortal Kombat 1 character reveal trailers. Uh, the Quan Chi trailer is absolutely bonkers. They lean on on his like real sorcery skills and stuff and he, he's doing wild shit, summoning tentacles and creatures from portals from another realm. Uh, he's throwing skeletons at people. It's a lot and the fatality is really cool. Uh, you're gonna be able to play as Quan Chi if you're into the character pack thing, December 14th. Also uh, this week we put out a before you buy for Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. That's releasing this week. I would say that if you're a hardcore Avatar fan, like if you love the movies and if you loved the 2009 game, which was very very flawed, uh, but people really liked it. I would say consider this. It also has a lot of flaws and it has some of the Ubisoft open world repetition, but it's got some good ideas in there. And also it built an incredible Pandora and just gives you a lot of that power fantasy, that satisfaction if you like the movies. It's flawed, but it's a good avatar game. So yeah, if you wanna check out that whole video and I, I do suggest reading other reviews cause you know, some opinions are a little mixed, but check it out down there. Uh, also linked the trailer for the Fallout Amazon TV series. Uh, we talked about it last week when they revealed some images and stuff for it, like Walton Goggins as a ghoul, uh, and some Brotherhood of Steel stuff. But now we got the trailer and it looks kind, can I say that it looks kind of good? I mean, it's, it's still so early to judge. There's also a new trailer out for Halo season two. So like, I, like these things are up in the air, but I don't know. This is looking all right. I, I don't wanna jinx it because I still think we're on thin ice with some uh, video game adaptations uh, and Fallout is a big one, uh, but see the trailer, judge for yourself. Maybe if enough people are interested, we'll make a video on that. We'll do we'll do movie ranks or TV ranks or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you guys think. And let me know what you think about everything going on this week. Of course, uh, with the game awards, let me know what you think about some of the big moments, the surprises, the reveals, uh, some winners and losers, something that got snubbed. Like the awards don't really matter. I really care about like all the game reveals and stuff, but let's talk about any of that stuff. And of course, all this extra news let me know how you're feeling. If you like what we do here, just catch up on the news real quick. Every week, clicking the like button helps us. We do really appreciate it. We're here every Friday. We've been doing it for ever now. The Friday show has been going on for so long. So thank you if you've been watching, new or old. But regardless, have a great weekend. Be safe. I'm Jake Baldino. Pizza's all me.